tough on Russia, but he's basically Putin's puppet. Liar. Trademark. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most iconic SNL sketches that have hilariously spoofed presidential debates, delivering both laugh-out-loud moments and, at times, some sharp truths. I'd also like to give a shout out to the third graders of Gladys Woods Elementary <laughs> who were so helpful to me in my debate prep. Number 10. Democratic Debate Cold Open The first Democratic primary debate of 2016 featured five candidates vying for the opportunity to become the party's nominee. But let's be honest, everyone was only interested in two, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. This SNL sketch hilariously captured that truth, treating the others practically as stage props. We do need to fix things, Bernie, but you're promising everyone a golden goose. There is no golden goose, so America, follow me, because I've got some chicken that'll do. The sketch also introduced us to Larry David's eerily accurate impression of Sanders, which was so spot on it was almost unsettling. What's the deal with emails anyway? I forgot my password the other day, so they say, we'll email you a new one. But I can't get into my email. Forgot the password. I mean, talk about a ball buster. Clinton and Sanders face off against each other, covering everything from her email scandal to his crusade against big banks. And then there was former Virginia Senator Jim Webb, who battled for attention only to quickly back down when his controversial views came under the spotlight. Okay, Senator, here's a question. You once said that affirmative action is racist against whites. Explain. <laughs> Pass. Number 9. VP Fly Debate Cold Open Everyone who watched the 2020 vice presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Mike Pence came away buzzing about one thing, the fly. That moment was parodied in this sketch, which kicked off with Pence quietly taking the podium, while Harris made a grand entrance, dancing and spraying disinfectant everywhere. Then, in a twist on the 1986 horror The Fly, Joe Biden tries to teleport into the debate, but ends up as, you guessed it, a fly. Let me at him. Let me at him. As if that wasn't enough, a second fly joins the mix, revealed to be the reincarnation of Herman Cain. They invited me to a rally with no mask. Said everything is fine, Herman. I catch corona. Trump tell me. Fine, Despite all of the chaos, Maya Rudolph's Harris completely steals the show, delivering zingers and priceless reactions before finally doing what we all wanted to do. Now, I'd like to hear the vice president's response, and while he speaks, I'm going to smile at him like I'm in a TJ Maxx and a white lady ask me if I work here. Number 8. Bush Dukakis Debate Clocking in at a whopping 14 minutes, this spin on the second 1988 presidential debate between George H.W. Bush and Michael Dukakis threw everything at the wall. And most of it stuck. Sam, that uh, kind of aspersion on my character quite frankly makes me, uh, well, there's no other word for it, enraged. <laughs> enraged. From the moment Dana Carvey's Bush gave John Lovitz's Dukakis a patronizing pat on the head, we knew we were in for a wild ride. Although Carvey's Bush impression wasn't fully polished yet, he still nailed the then-Vice President's robotic delivery and knack for dodging important questions. If I had more time, I could spell out in greater detail, but I'm afraid, unfortunately, in a short answer session like this, all I can say is, we are on the track, we're getting the job done, we can do more, but let's stay the course. Lovitz also held his own against Carvey, expertly capturing and poking fun at Dukakis's icy, emotionless demeanor. Well, if, uh, if such a time machine were possible, I'd like the vice president to explain why we haven't already been visited by time travelers from the future. The sketch wrapped up on a high note by bringing out a literal child to play Bush's running mate, Dan Quayle. He was just great! He was presidential. He's going to be a great president, and I'll be the vice president. Number 7. First Biden-Trump Debate By the time the 46th season of SNL premiered in October 2020, all anyone could talk about was the chaotic first debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. We begin with the Supreme Court. President Trump, 
Two minutes. I'm going to do 10. So it made perfect sense that the season opener zeroed in on the train wreck, delivering a highly anticipated parody. The real life debate had no shortage of lies, insults, and interruptions, and this sketch did its best to keep pace. But he's lying. I can't point out if he says a lie. I, s I said two words, you son of a no. Don't do it, Joe. It's exactly what he wants. It nailed the absurdity, portraying Trump as more interested in interrupting than debating, while Biden remained focused on maintaining his cool amidst the chaos. Losing control. <laughs> Back to you, Chris. Of course, no SNL political sketch would be complete without a bunch of cameos, with Maya Rudolph returning as Kamala Harris and singer Harry Styles turning in a surprise pre-taped appearance. I know it'll calm me down. My new Harry Styles meditation tape. We dip our toes in the cold, wet sand. Nice. And sit and face the sea. Number six, the 2012 vice presidential debate. Ever since he became the vice presidential candidate in 2008, we've seen many iterations of Joe Biden on SNL, but none quite match the high octane in your face energy of Jason Sudeikis. First of all, I want to thank Center College for hosting us this evening. Oh boy, here we go! This hit its peak in the 2012 VP debate spoof against Taryn Killam's Paul Ryan, where Biden constantly threatens physical harm against Ryan, flexing his old man strength. You want to know my workout? When the Amtrak breaks down on my morning commute, I strip down to my tidy whities I push that bitch all the way to Washington. Oh, what a difference time can make. The rest of the sketch doesn't stray far from the actual debate, often lifting quotes directly from the candidates. But it still delivers big laughs with its over-the-top moments, from Ryan chugging water like a camel to Biden's desperate attempt to connect with young voters. And to the young people, to the young people out there who are worried they're never gonna, never gonna see that Social Security they're entitled to, I say, don't worry, homies, Big Daddy Joe's got your back. <laughs> And let's not forget the cherry on top, a surprise cameo from Usain Bolt. Usain, please tell him who won the 100 meters. I did. You did. And where did I finish? You didn't finish. You weren't even there. Thank you, Usain. No problem. Number five, VP debate, Sarah Palin and Joe Biden. Four years before taking on Paul Ryan, Joe Biden squared off against Alaska's folksy Governor Sarah Palin in the 2008 vice presidential debate. You know, John McCain and I, we're a couple of mavericks. And gosh darn it, we're gonna take that maverick energy right to Washington and we're gonna use it to fix this financial crisis and everything else that's plaguing this great country of ours. SNL alum Tina Fey hilariously embodied Palin, nailing the quirky spirit of the entire election season with lines that quickly became pop culture staples. In this sketch, Fey kept the laughs rolling, giving ditzy answers that had nothing to do with the questions asked by Queen Latifah's moderator. Governor Palin, would you like to respond to Senator Biden's comments about John McCain? No, thank you, but I would like to talk about being an outsider. Biden, on the other hand, was depicted as torn over his feelings for Palin's running mate, John McCain, his dear friend turned opponent. I mean, let's be <laughs> frank, John McCain, and again, this is a man I would take a bullet for. <laughs> is bad at his job and mentally unstable. The sketch wrapped up with a nod to Palin's beauty pageant past as she whipped out a flute, ready for a talent portion that never was. Are we not doing the talent portion? <laughs> Number four, the Colorado presidential debate, Obama and Romney. Sometimes the most absurd SNL debate sketches are the ones that take the tiniest moments from the real life debates and spin them into the most hilarious fantasies. Uh, there are a lot of points I wanna make tonight. Uh, but most importantly, uh, 20 years ago today, uh, I became the luckiest man uh, on earth <laughs> when Michelle Obama agreed to marry. Take this one for example. In the actual first debate between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney in 2012, the president was criticized for looking distracted. SNL took this and ran with it, depicting him zoning out because he forgot his wedding anniversary and desperately pondering what gift to get the first lady. Let's see, they had a Denver Bronco sweatshirt. She might like that. The hotel has some nice bathrobes for sale. Uh, that could be good. World's greatest mom coffee mug. 
Guess Everybody likes there. coffee. Then he starts griping about the high altitude in Denver where the debate took place. And that is simply not what is this, 10 miles above sea level? But it's not mine. I can barely As keep I my said, head up. Any reduction in rates would be revenue. I think I might pass out. But why stop there? Everyone from Romney to moderator Jim Lehrer gets their own introspective voiceover moment. Because, of course, who doesn't deserve one? I mean, where but on PBS can you find quality programming like Antiques Roadshow, Masterpiece Theater featuring Downton Abbey, or special delights like Bill Moyer's Journal? Number 3. Debate 76 in one of SNL's earliest debate parodies, the show set the stage for political satire in America for years to come. The first part, of course, is the um, eternal question why that has plagued philosophers from Socrates to Thomas Aquinas to Bob Dylan. Featuring Chevy Chase as a heavily medicated Gerald Ford and Dan Aykroyd as Jimmy Carter, this sketch wasted no time diving into absurdity. Chase dramatically reveals a syringe sticking out of his suit and buzzes in as soon as the national anthem starts, eager to name that tune. I can name that tune in four notes. Things only go downhill from there, as Ford fumbles over his past blunder on Soviet Union domination in Eastern Europe, and Carter leans into his reputation for womanizing. At this moment in my heart, I'm wearing a leather mask and breathing in your ear. While Chase and Aykroyd's impressions were ridiculously good, perhaps the real highlight came at the end, with the nonsensical list of credits. Number 2. Donald Trump vs. Hillary Clinton Third Debate Cold Open The hotly contested 2016 presidential election saw candidates Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton face off in three debates, all of which received the SNL treatment. In the first debate, I, I set the table. In the second debate, I fired up the grill. And tonight, I feast. But perhaps the most blistering spoof was the third and final one featuring Tom Hanks as moderator Chris Wallace and Alec Baldwin and Kate McKinnon returning as Trump and Clinton respectively. I have personally met with the Mexican president. I forget his name. I think it was something like Mr. Guacamole. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse me, Senor Guacamole. <laughs> The sketch starts off with Trump promising to be calm, but as expected, he quickly reverts to his usual antics, hurling insults and tagging his opponent as a nasty woman, just like in the actual debate. Meanwhile, McKinnon portrayed Clinton as the steady, grounded candidate, brimming with confidence and happy to watch her rival crash and burn. Mr. Trump, it has become very clear that you're probably going to lose. Correct. <laughs> Oh well, we all know how the real story ended. In America, you deserve better than an F. So on November 8th, vote for me, and I promise I will be a stone cold B. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. The 2020 Democratic Debate. SNL shows off its deep bench of talented performers with several spot on impressions. Mayor Bloomberg, how did you get in here? Well, I tipped the doorman $30 million. GOP debate cold open. Daryl Hammond and Beck Bennett shine in a face off mostly between Trump and Jeb Bush. Hey, Jeb, bro, losers say what? What? Oh, <laughs> Second presidential debate. Kerry has an unknown plan while Bush plans to get rid of the bad internets. I think the problem here may be more of a question of getting rid of the bad internets and keeping the good internets. CNBC presents the third Republican presidential debate, a fascinating who's who of who didn't become president in 2012. Hey, hey how, how cool is little Ronnie Paul here, huh? <laughs> that was little, little birdie arms, huh? Final debate part one. Joe the plumber steals the show in this sketch, even though we never see him. Joe stands about three and a half inches tall. <laughs> Except when he's upset, then he can become as big as a house. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. First Presidential Debate – Al Gore and George W. Bush Much has been said about how the first presidential debate between Al Gore and George W. Bush contributed to Gore's eventual defeat. If anything, this parody of the debate hammered that nail even deeper into Gore's coffin. Well, Jim, 
Governor Bush and I have two very different plans to offer tax relief to American families. The sketch amplified the vice president's tendency to devolve into technical tirades, highlighted by the constant references to his notorious lockbox. A lockbox. But Bush didn't escape unscathed either. First of all, I think that any instability in that first country you mentioned uh, <laughs> is troubling. And clearly, the, the second guy you spoke of uh, beat the first guy. His knack for mispronouncing words inspired the SNL writers to coin the now famous strategery. Strategery. A line so iconic that Bush himself jokingly embraced it. Perhaps the 2000 election might have turned out differently if the debate had gone another way. But one thing is clear. Few SNL sketches have had such real-world implications as this one. Personally. I favor seeking the diplomatic help of a person I call guy number three. Which of these is your personal favorite SNL debate sketch? Sound off in the comments below. Now, one of the keys to the lockbox would be kept by the president. The other key would be sealed in a small magnetic container. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.